What's going on guys and welcome back to another Treywick Garage video. Today I just want to make just a little short video just to put something out. Um, I'm kind of slacking on my content right now. I'm still waiting uh, for a time to get the aero kit put on this car. So uh, right now is just a little bit of an in-between. There's not really a whole lot going on with any of my vehicles. So but it was still want to be consistent at upload. So I want to put this little short video together and give you guys kind of a three month update ish on daily driving this. So this is my 2014 C7 Corvette and I've owned this car for just a little over three months now. So I bought this car uh, right at the end of March, so it's currently the beginning of July now. So a little over three-ish months that I've owned this car and I've been daily driving it practically every single day. Now, daily driving a Corvette, uh, especially a newer one like this, a C7, is not unheard of, but it's not the most common thing in the world. I think you have a lot of your Corvette drivers now, specifically with these newer cars that have all the updated entertainment, um, modern conveniences, I guess you could say, uh, that are daily driving these cars more. And I'm sure as many of you guys know, I also own a C3 1976 Corvette, um, and that car is not really that daily drivable. But this car, on the other hand, uh, has really got all the modern conveniences. The engine is, is kind of made to where uh, it's made daily drive. You can put a lot of miles on these cars. I've seen them well over 100,000 miles and people not really having any issues with regular maintenance. So I just kind of wanted to uh, do a little three month update on what it's been like daily driving my C7 Corvette. So if you're in the market for one of these cars or if you have one and you're considering daily driving it, just tell you kind of some of the things that I've experienced while doing it. So the first thing that I want to touch on is overall driving quality uh most people when you look at a corvette you don't think oh that's a great daily driving car it's going to be comfortable it's going to be fuel efficient it's going to be all those and honestly before buying this car i really thought the same thing so that was one of my big things when i was considering getting a new car to be my daily driver and you guys know that if you watch my original video when i talked about buying this car i was picking between this car and a gen 2 ford raptor now I wanted to drive both of those cars before I pick which one I wanted to drive as my daily because again, I mean, I love this car. It's a great performance car, but is it gonna be something that I'm gonna enjoy driving every single day? And I test drove one very similar to this. It was here local. I decided, you know, let me go drive it before I really start searching out for one of these cars and drive a really long ways away just to get up there and test drive it and go, I don't think I can drive this as a daily driver. And to my surprise, I was absolutely blown away on how good of just an everyday car this is. For those of you that may own a C7 or have driven one, you'll know that it's a very comfortable car to drive just on the daily. Now this car is a Z51 package, so it is equipped with the dual mode exhaust as well as the suspension that you can switch through. You can change the suspension mode on this car, which is really nice when it's coming to daily driving a sports car because it's almost like you're getting two different cars. You can put the car in track mode, you can have the loud exhaust, you can have the really hard suspension, really tight steering, or you can put it in touring mode and it drives practically like a regular car. Now I've been driving this car in touring mode uh, to me that's kind of the best for me you guys know with these MPP cars uh, you can actually leave the exhaust open all the time you can just set it to stay open uh, that way it doesn't switch with the modes and that's what I've been doing I've been driving with this thing in touring mode it's honestly really comfortable I mean the suspension is not like your everyday regular car I mean if you're going to get like a Cadillac or a Tahoe or an SUV or just something like that uh, it is a little bit rougher suspension now compared to my 2012 Camaro I, can, I will say that this car does ride a little bit rougher which is to be expected that car is a V6. It's got a lot bigger tires on it. It's got an 18 inch wheel and I'm not exactly sure what size the tire is. Very different. You can see we're working with a lot less rubber here on the Michelin Pilot Sport uh, all seasons. Now I'm sure there are some things that I could do to change that. I could put you know an aftermarket suspension on it which I don't really want to do because I like having the availability to switch between the modes. Or I could you know get a smaller wheel and go with a little bit bigger tire and it give me a little bit more cushion on the road but I really like the look of these. I, I don't like the look of my 18 so it's not that big of a problem for me. Again it's a sports car so I know it's gonna ride a little bit rougher than let's say a Cadillac or something like that so it's not a big concern for me but you can't put it in track mode and it does get really really rough so I live out in the country so we've got a little bit bumpy roads it's not the best roads ever uh, when I'm driving in the city on the you know really good roads you can't tell the difference but out here on these country roads it does get a little bit bumpy sometimes uh, even in the soft suspension mode but again I want to reiterate not really an issue I still love daily driving this car and it's not a burden at all all right, so next I want to talk about probably the biggest question that everybody has 
when you're considering daily driving a V8 sports car is how is the gas mileage? Now before buying this car, I did read some reviews online just to kind of see what people were getting the gas mileage wise. And again, that wasn't a, you know, a big selling point for me. It wasn't like, oh, it gets terrible gas mileage. I'm not buying a sports car. I didn't really expect it out of a sports car, but I was pleasantly surprised by reading the reviews and also owning this car on just how good a gas mileage it does get. You have it on the interstate, you put it in cruise. I've gotten close to 400 miles on a tank, which is really, really good for a V8 sports car. Now around the city, uh, I don't know exactly what my miles per gallon is. You'd have to calculate that out, but I can usually get about, you know, 300-ish miles on the tank, depending on how I'm driving. It's usually between 280 and 300. But then again, when you get it on the interstate, you put it in eco mode and you really just cruise, like I've had no issue getting 400 miles on a tank. So I actually just got back from a trip. I took it all the way down to the beach and used an eighth of a tank. So the beach is about, it's about an hour and a half away from me. So, you know, when you consider that, really good gas mileage and i think a lot of that is due to the cylinder deactivation that this car has so if you don't know what cylinder deactivation is um, it's very similar to the auto start stop on a car however when this car gets to cruising at a certain speed or a certain rpm it actually shuts off half of the engine so it's actually only running on four cylinders now i know that a lot of people are not fans of the cylinder deactivation honestly i'm not either uh, it kind of sounds like a vacuum cleaner when you're driving and all of a sudden it just like and your exhaust cuts out. And if you've driven one of these cars, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But a lot of people aren't fans because they say it does do a lot of harm to your engine, and I can totally see that. Now, I haven't done a whole lot of research. I know that, you know, especially in later models, in certain modes, the cylinder deactivation is not as active. But I did look into it to see if you could just turn it off, like, through the computer. And the only way to do that is to actually retune the ECU, and that's not really something I want to do right now. But eventually down the road, when we start putting some performance mods on this car, we may have to get the car retuned anyway. So if we do go down that road, uh, I will probably will get rid of the de cylinder deactivation which will hurt my gas mileage but you know it's better for the engine in the long term now the next thing I want to talk about is some issues that I've had with this car and they're nothing major like I said this car only has like right now about 33,000 miles on it um, so it's fairly new even though the age is a little bit old but I have had a few little minor issues that just kind of came with the car and the main one was being the rattle of this t-top so these early c7s were notorious for having a rattly t-top when you hit bumps and like I said living out where I do we do have a lot of bumps but I was actually really simple process just getting those little o-rings if you haven't watched that video i actually link it up above that way you can watch that video of how i fix that and if you're having that problem it's a super simple easy and cheap fix that will save you a lot of headaches in the long run now i haven't done my research on this next topic so you guys will have to excuse me if this is a, a known common thing but when i'm driving at night and i have my headlights on you can see that they have these suspended the hid headlights on these corvettes and when i'm driving on a bumpy road like when you're looking up at the road signs whenever you hit a bump the headlights are really shaky, like they really jump. So I don't know if that's something with them being loose. I don't know if that's how they're designed to keep from rattling and cracking or whatever. But if any of you guys out there have experienced this problem or know about this problem, drop a comment below because I'd really like to know, like, is this a thing? Is it something I need to get looked at? Or is it just a part that's on all of these Corvettes that I just have to live with? Now, I wanted to come inside and show you guys one more thing. I don't know if you can see, but right there, there's a little crack in the screen now that crack was there when i got the car it started right here at the bottom and it's going up and it's just in this little uh plastic or acrylic cover that's covering the dash panel and i haven't really been able to tell uh if it's spread since i got the car i'm sure that driving on the bumpy roads it, it is causing it to crack a little bit more I, I think that it is but i can't be for sure so i've been keeping a watch on it now and you know kind of seeing is it expanding and if so you know what's causing it it is really frustrating because like it's just in a little annoying problem and i don't know if that's a common problem again i haven't really done a lot of research on it to see if other people have had the issue too but it's just something that's kind of annoying because i'm like you know it bothers me that it's cracked and if it's getting worse eventually i'm gonna have to replace it which probably means pulling the dash out and that's gonna be a pain and i don't know if that's gonna be covered under my warranty so i did have a warranty on this car and i would think that that would cover it if that's like a common known manufacturer issue but Again, I don't know. It's just something that's slightly annoying. Now, the next point I want to hit on is keeping this car clean. You guys know, with especially, it's the stereotypical thing with Corvette drivers is that they keep their cars perfect and pristine at all times. Now, I've always been one to like to keep my cars clean, but I kind of neglect them. And as much as I drive them, it's just, it's hard for me. I'm not really OCD enough to wash my car every time I drive it because realistically, I'd be washing a car every single day. But overall, the car has not been awful to keep clean. You can see it's obviously a bug magnet as pretty much every car is, especially this time, uh, weather in the South, there's flies everywhere. It's, it's awful. 
And a main problem that was hard to keep that really showed up on this white paint early was brake dust. This car was notorious for having brake dust all up the sides. But after I installed these uh, mud splash guards here, it actually has helped out a ton. And I also did a video on installing those. I'll link that up here as well if you want to watch that video. Uh, I would highly recommend any C7 owner getting them. I actually think they kind of improve the looks of the car a little bit and they definitely are more functional. And I think I bought mine uh, a kit on eBay for like 20 bucks. So they're super cheap, super easy to install again i'll link that video up here above that way you can watch that video and i'll show you how easy of an install it really was but for those of you that may have you know problems with brake dust or it really bothers you uh, it actually has helped a lot with you know just road grime and all that kind of stuff another thing about this car that was not something i was necessarily looking to have it was not something i had to have but i actually had a really good one on my camaro was the sound system so this car was equipped with the uh the bose sound system which it sounds really really good i had the premium audio on my 2012 camaro and it was really really great just for driving around listening to music and again it was not something that i had to have i just like to listen to music when i'm driving sometimes but coming from the audio visual world you know i really like a good sound system so uh the sound system in this car is great so if you're daily driving this car and you want to listen to music or, or whatever you're going to have no problem having a really good sound system in this car. Like I touched on a little bit earlier, this car is equipped with the MPP dual mode exhaust. So it's got the valves. You can make it super quiet, super loud, whatever you want. And I know a lot of people when driving a sports car every day, they don't want to be loud. They don't want to be obnoxious. They just want to enjoy it um, and not feel like they're making a scene. Now for me personally, and I'm sure a lot of the rest of you out there, I like to make noise. I like my cars to sound good. So, But with the dual mode exhaust, uh, really you can switch it, make it dead quiet pretty much makes no noise or you can have the valves open and when you get on it it's a pretty good sounding exhaust now speaking of the mpp uh, if any of you guys have this c7 you'll know that uh, there's a fuse that you can pull in the fuse panel because even when you have the exhaust all the way open uh, at certain rpms and speeds it kind of half closes the valves and it really doesn't sound that good so that was one of the first things i did was i pretty much pulled the fuse um, so now my exhaust is wide open all the time now the cylinder deactivation still does cut the exhaust a little bit but it's nothing super major and again if anytime i want to use the exhaust and you know close the valves all i gotta do is throw the fuse back in and i've got the full mpp dual mode exhaust again now eventually i do want to do an aftermarket exhaust system on this car uh, but right now it really is good for what i'm using it for and it gives me that availability to be either quiet or loud if i want to which again when you're just driving and cruising you don't want a super loud car all the time you don't want any drone anything like that so this car really does a great job at that with that mpp dual mode exhaust and lastly i just want to talk about just kind of the easeability of driving this car every day so i know that you know for people that haven't really owned a sports car like this or are not familiar with driving sports cars it could be a little bit intimidating thinking like oh i'm going to push the gas it's just going to take off i'm going to be flying around town and this car is really not like that this car in my opinion is very simple like you if you push the gas and you really get on it it's gonna go but just driving through everyday traffic it's it's really not bad you can you can ease on and off the throttle it's not gonna jolt it's not really rough the transmission is super smooth even though I have the 2014 which has the six speed instead of the eight speed I'm sure that one's even more comfortable to drive every day but it's really comfortable it's really great driver uh, like I said it's not intimidating I mean it, it can be if you get in this car and you don't know what you're doing and you hit the throttle on it like if you were driving a Toyota Camry or something like that like it's gonna go it's gonna get you in trouble but especially with these newer cars all the safety features they have on them like the ABS the traction control all that you're not really gonna have any problems unless you're really being stupid all right so I just want to wrap this video up I just want to make a quick video just kind of updating you guys on kind of my three month experience on daily driving a Corvette which is a little bit new for me. I have daily driven a sports car, like I said, ever since I was 15, but uh, this is kind of a whole different beast than a, a V6 Camaro to say. And overall, I would say if you're in the market for a, a really good sports car around the $40,000, $50,000 range, uh, this is a great one. I mean, it's it's a Chevrolet, it's reliable. I haven't had any major issues with it yet. And if I do, I'll be covered under warranty. Uh, a lot of these companies will offer good warranties. Chevy's really good with working people with warranties. And it's just fun. I mean, it's a, it's a good look car it's going to get attention wherever you go I always have people stopping wanting to talk to me at the gas station people really enjoy the looks of this car and in my opinion it's got a lot of performance as well as a lot of you know luxurious features and everyday drivability comforts that make this car a really good daily driver despite the fact that you know it's a 
top tier Chevrolet sports car. Now again, this is just the Stingray with the Z51 performance package. I can't really speak on if you're daily driving a Z06 Grand Sport or ZR1. I'm sure that's gonna be a little bit more, a little bit more power, a little bit more intimidating to drive every day. But this car, in my opinion, it's a great balance between you know comfort and you still got your performance there when you need it. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it entertaining, or you know, maybe we're able to learn something. If you're in the market for a C7 or, or a similar car, that's just kind of some of my experiences. And honestly, I would say go for it. It makes a good daily driver. If you enjoy driving a smaller sports car um, and you want something that can kind of do both, this is a really good car and it's a really good value right now. You can pick these things up relatively cheap and I'm really happy with the decision I made and I've thoroughly enjoyed daily driving this car for the last three months. So again, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. It'll help us grow the channel and kind of get us where we want to go, get us to be able to do some really cool stuff with this car and some of the other cars that I own. And again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on the next one.